Hello everybody, welcome to another video, and today we are going to be talking about how do you build a fire while you're out in the woods. So, now you may be thinking, but Logan, you suck at camping, you fail every time you go out. This may be true, but at the end of the day, I still genuinely know what I am doing in most cases. And something that you'll find out very quickly when you head out into the woods is that you do need some form of heat to keep yourself warm. Summer camping, not a huge deal. Uh, late spring, early fall, not a huge deal either. Uh, but then it starts to get like a little bit nicer to have a fire as you're relaxing. Uh, but when you get into the winter, you are going to want something to keep you warm. And as you saw on the last camping trip, we had a raging fire going and it was keeping us super warm. And we were dealing with freezing temperatures at that point. So the three things that every fire needs is heat, fuel, and oxygen. So with those three, you have the fire triangle as it's commonly referred to. So fuel is often wood or gas when you're cooking. And in worse situations, it could be electrical or it could be grease. Those are bad. Put those out. Don't use those to keep yourself warm. And then the oxygen is going to allow the fire to breathe and actually help that chemical reaction that's going on to grow stronger. Think about how a blacksmith uses like bellows to keep a fire going. While it may seem counterintuitive to be blowing on the fire, in some cases you may need to to make sure there's enough oxygen getting into the fire. And the last part is heat. As you may know, when it's cold out, it's actually going to be a lot harder to start a fire because the temperature is preventing the wood from burning. And so that's why you're often using some kind of ignition, whether that be matches a lighter, um, matches a lighter or some kind of friction, um, like a uh, ferro rod and some steel, uh, flint and steel, two sticks being rubbed together. That provides your ignition, which then builds this cycle of those three working together. So if you're lacking one of those things, you're not going to have a fire that's going to stay lit for very long. So the next thing to talk about would be the different kinds of fires that you can build. So I'm going to focus on three main kinds of fire. There is a lean-to, there is a teepee, and there is a log cabin. Now, there are a variety of different fires, whether you're building it in a pit, whether you're building it on top of some rocks for various cooking needs. You can Google all day long and find new ways to build fires and different utilities for each of them. But the core three that I've come across most are the lean-to, the TP, and the log cabin. And so they each have a little bit of a benefit from each other. My personal favorite is the log cabin. Um, it allows you to get a little bit more oxygen into the fire and can help with starting a fire to get it a little bit warmer. And then, as you saw at the end of our last video, we switched to more of a teepee style where we were stacking the wood over top of it, building the fire a lot taller instead of going wider. So what's the other one, the lean-to? Okay, well, so as you can tell by the image, the lean-to is one log with other logs leaned up on it. This can be a really beneficial fire when you're dealing with high winds. So obviously if the wind is way too high, you're probably not gonna be able to get it to light. However, using a lean-to, you're able to build it a little bit thicker so that way the wind is not penetrating into wherever your tinder is trying to ignite your fire. Let's quick jump outside and look at the different kinds of wood that we can use. Okay, outside now, and as you may be able to tell, it is a little bit chilly. Have gloves on, have a jacket on. Um, but first let's look at what those different kinds of wood really look like when compared to each other. So the first kind of wood that we talked about was kindling. Uh, this is really light wood, smaller wood, and so you can get it a little bit smaller or you can find some that start to get a little bit thicker. This stuff is going to be broken up a lot and is going to be then layered on top of each other to create a tighter bundle where you're actually going to be starting your fire. 
Another great thing to find is some dried out pine needles or in some cases even dried out leaves that will help ignite your fire if you don't have any kind of fire starter or paper with you. The next size up that you're gonna be going, and this one is a little bit larger than would be necessary, but is to your smaller sticks. So you have your kindling and then you have your smaller sticks. Smaller sticks are gonna be really good for getting the fire started. Once that kindling it actually ignites, these smaller sticks are gonna have that smaller diameter. They're gonna burn a little bit quicker than larger stuff and is gonna give you a better chance of actually keeping your fire going. And then the last piece you're gonna be looking for are some actual logs, bigger sticks, stuff that is gonna burn for an extended period of time. So with all three of these, you're able to actually build a pretty decent fire. And I'm gonna throw it back to the studio. So you're always gonna start with those smaller pieces so that you can get that fire started and burning and then move those larger pieces onto the fire as it's capable of burning those. If you start out right away with big pieces of wood, it's gonna choke out the fire. There isn't gonna be enough fuel, as we talked about in the triangle, to keep that fire going. Now, how do you actually get that fire going though? Well, there's a few different ways you can do it. You can use some kind of fire starter, which can either be bought at a store or you can make it at home. I've made it using uh, lint and beeswax before to keep it a little bit more waterproof. Uh, cotton balls and petroleum jelly is a great one, but you can also go to any outdoor style store and they're probably gonna have some form of like wood chip block that then has a binding agent that's gonna be flammable and especially for poor weather conditions, that's gonna probably be your best bet. Now, if you're lucky enough to come across a place like where we were climbing in the last video, the fire that we built up in that area was fueled by white pine branches and white pine needles. So as I was building the frame for that fire, Sean was looking around and found a old bird's nest that was dried out on the ground, no longer being used by anything. And it was made up of white pine needles and other shredded barks. And that thing went up so quickly and was really able to provide a large amount of heat to get that fire started. Now, once it started burning a little bit, we had to keep blowing on it to make sure that the rest of the white pine caught. And as you can tell by that clip, that fire burned wonderfully and also burned very cleanly because the wood didn't have any bark on it. It was very light white pine and it was extremely dry, so it wasn't smoky at all. But in most cases, we're not gonna be that lucky and our wood is gonna have bark on it. It's gonna possibly be a little bit wet and for situations like that, you're really gonna wanna focus on building that smaller fire first and then possibly even surrounding your fire with the bigger logs to help dry them out further. So let's throw it back outside and get that fire started. So what are some things that can be beneficial for helping you build a fire, start a fire while you're camping or even in your backyard? Well, first things first, you're going to need to be able to find some wood. Obviously you need wood to keep your fire going, but then once you find that wood, something beneficial could be some kind of folding saw like this, that when you click it out into position, locks into place and then just pushing the button closes up really nicely packs away, not too large. Once you have the wood cut, you might need to split it into smaller pieces and that's where something like an ax or a hatchet comes into play. This is one of my personal favorite ones that I own. 
Um, it's like a two and a half pound head, so it's very light, but it has this longer handle on it, so you're really able to get some leverage behind it, um, especially for cleaning limbs off of things. This one is super nice for being able to cut through that very efficiently. Once you get all of your wood cut up, split up, and divided into the different size pieces you're going to need for building your fire, you're going to need some way to ignite it. Personally, I'm a fan of just using a lighter. I find that to be easiest, but in a lot of cases, I don't carry a lighter with me, and so there's pretty much always matches in my backpack. So I know that if I have a good tinder bundle, the bit that's going to start the fire, or using a fire starter of some kind, I'm able to just strike a match, make sure it goes into there, and that gets lit really well. And as long as I'm able to maintain that being lit, and it starts heating up that other wood, I know that I'm going to be able to have a fire. You can also use some kind of ferro rod, magnesium rod, something that's going to spark when you strike it, or you can go old fashioned and use two sticks rubbing them together. I've never personally had any luck with that, but I know there's other videos out there of people doing it with relative ease. So if you would like to give it a go, all the power to you, go for it. Also, if you haven't already, make sure that you hit the subscribe button. That way you can stay up to date on all the videos as they're coming out and hit the like button because YouTube is super fond of that right now. Let's talk about a little bit of troubleshooting for your fire. So it's not lighting, it's not burning well, it keeps getting choked out. What could that be? Well, we'll go back to that triangle. So something is missing out of that triangle and we need to figure out what that is. If your wood's too wet or too green, as in it was like freshly cut off of a live tree, that heat isn't gonna be able to build up in that wood, allowing it to ignite. If you stack too many logs too close together, there isn't gonna be enough oxygen that's able to get in. So while it may seem counterintuitive for building a really strong, really hardy fire, you do wanna space it out a little bit so that you at least have like a finger width of distance between the pieces of wood. So that way air can pass through, flames can pass through, and that fire is then able to breathe. Also, it could be something as simple as the bark on the logs is not allowing it to ignite. I have had it where bark is too damp, but the log itself is dry. And so using your hatchet or your ax, you're able to kind of peel that away. Even if you have a knife with you, you're able to kind of peel that bark off and allow that wood to burn and dry up a little bit faster. Why isn't your fire actually starting? Well, it's most likely because of whatever you're using to try to start your fire. Um, wet leaves are not gonna ignite well. Uh, wet pine needles are not gonna ignite well. Even in some cases, small branches might not be from a super dry, dead tree. They may be a little bit fresher than what you first anticipated. If your tinder is wet in any way, it can really prevent anything from igniting to even start out with. Looking for dry patches that are underneath larger trees, um, possibly in like a small grove or something that has a covering. You can usually find some dry kindling as well as dry tinder to get your fire started. If it rained the night before, it might be a little bit harder and what you're most likely gonna have to do is use your hatchet or your ax, split up the wood really finely so that you're able to get pretty much splinters of wood that you're able to build your own little tinder bundle to be able to light your fire. Unfortunately, the hardest part of building a fire is it requires patience. Building a fire is not something you figure out immediately. It takes time and trial and error to actually figure out the best way to keep your fire going. Throwing too big of logs on too early, you'll choke it out. Putting too wet of logs on it can also choke it out, or it could allow those logs to dry out depending on your setup if you have them like elevated over top of it and give you better firewood in the not too distant future. The most important thing about building a fire, you need to be patient, you need to be persistent. You need to understand what you're doing and do it with intent. If you're just trying to get stuff to light on fire, you may get it for an instant, but you're not gonna have that larger, warmer fire 
in a little while. You have to be intentional about what you're doing and actually think about how your actions are gonna be able to benefit you in the future. So I realized that got a little bit uh, heavier, a little bit more introspective there. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't already, make sure to hit the subscription button, like I said earlier, as well as give this video a thumbs up. That way I know you like what I'm putting out there. And if you have any questions about building a fire, how to find quality tools for camping, such as axes, hatchets, saws, feel free to leave those down in the comments below and I would be happy to answer them for you. So once again, thank you for watching this video. Hope this is able to keep you a little bit warmer in your camping adventures. And we'll see you in the next one.